Do you want to make your motion graphics look the best? Well, we're going to break down several standard projects to make your After Effects masterpiece as realistic as possible. So let's get started and create the best visuals. All right, we're going to go through these four different scenes so that any challenging project that is thrown your way, that project will actually fear you. But you can skip through this tutorial as you need to. First, let's talk about setting up a scene with reactive shadows and lighting so we can make this showroom-esque master scene with any type of graphic or image that you have. So I have some pre-made graphics here, but first we'll create a solid layer and apply the gradient ramp effect. I would choose two bright colors, or you can just stick with white if you like. Then duplicate this layer and make it 3D. By setting the X rotation to 90 degrees and lowering the position, you can create a floor that you just can't see yet, but be sure to scale this layer to be really large. Now, make all your graphics, images, or videos that you may have 3D layers and adjust the Y position just until they clip into the floor. All right, but now create a point light and make sure to check cast shadows. For all the layers, including the floor, make sure accept lights are set to off and accept and cast shadows are set to on. Then inside of your point light, set the fall off to smooth and increase the radius to determine the length of your shadows. You can adjust the shadow darkness and diffusion to soften the shadow like fabric softener. Now, as you move or animate the light, the shadows will update. I would also recommend adding the noise effect to an adjustment layer and feel free to use the CC light sweep effect on your graphics but these are all optional, just like my hairstyle. Murphy Law states if you have clients, one of them will want a 3D logo. So this is how to actually make a great looking 3D logo scene. As before, we have the background and the floor set up. And of course I have a logo, which is a vector file. Don't ask me why I chose the PayPal logo for this example, but with your logo, you can right click it and click create shapes from vector layer and if your logo is a vector you'll have this option but be sure to set your 3d renderer to advanced 3d now take the shape layer make it 3d and increase the extrusion depth to actually make it 3d if you like you can also create a square with the rectangle tool and make it 3d however for the square set the bevel depth to 100 and the style to convex to make a comfy cloud for your logo. It just looks cool. And I would also offset the Z position to separate it from your logo. Then parent the square to your logo layer. This way you'll be able to animate everything as one element. And to make this scene look good as promised, you can create an environment light, which is only available in the advanced 3D workflow. If you like, you can also drop in an HDRI to use as your light map to create a visual 3D scene. And before we move on to the next example, you can crunch down on your animations and save hours of time by using our free animation presets. You can select any type of graphic or title, browse a preset, and watch your project come to life in seconds. You can utilize over 10,000 presets by checking the description below. This next project is all about making your individual motion graphics seem more realistic by giving them depth. Now, this seems like a lot of effects, but it's not. So I have a subtle background with a bright gradient ramp applied to it. I'll create a base graphic that is the same color as one of the gradients. Now this will basically blend it into the background and you know, that's good. Uh, we can make this stand out by right clicking and go into layer styles and we'll add bevel and emboss, inner glow and drop shadow. Bevel and emboss is the boss effect here. Hmm. Set the type to outer bevel, the size to 15 and lower the shadow opacity. With inner glow, increase the opacity to 100 and set the color to white. And then adjust the drop shadow to your liking to make it stand out on your background. Now, if you want to engrave objects inside of your master graphic, uh, create those shapes and then apply the bevel and emboss effect. Just set the style to pillow emboss and the size to zero. Then duplicate and place your graphics or titles that you want. And if you essentially want to dig a hole with one of your graphics, Set the bevel and boss direction to down. Increase the depth and size. Now you can create and combine all sorts of graphics with visual depth. All right, this last scene is all about lighting from a 2D perspective. So we have a gradient background, a title, and an image of a watch. This scene is very flat. So let's change that with some 2D lighting. I have these volumetric lights from my Epic VFX pack, but I'll give these away in the project files of this tutorial. But when you're using overlay assets, you can usually set the blend mode to screen, add, or in this case, we'll use soft light. 
and we can make this more intense by duplicating uh, the light asset. However, the scene is still flat, so we can take a primary graphic, duplicate it, and apply the drop shadow effect. I would generally adjust the softness and opacity here. Then for the master effect, add CC Radial Fast Blur. This will allow us to animate and stretch out the shadow effect to create cinematic-esque lighting. Keep in mind you may want to duplicate the drop shadow and adjust the settings depending on your scene. And for your top graphic layer, you may want to apply the curves effect or some sort of brightness effect to bring the original details back. But subscribe if you want to be the best and always be creating.